Welcome to an example in which we are solving 2 sine 2t plus 1 sine t equals 0. For all solutions, this, this says, you know, between 0 and 2 pi. So, um, <clears throat> how do we do it? Well, basically, notice that one of the main issues, let me, let me write it down here for us. 2 sine, I'm just make it x because I don't like t. My t's look like plus signs. Anyway, um, notice this is a double angle, and this is a single angle, right? We got 2x, and we got regular x. So that's the first issue to pay attention to. So let's go down and look at our notes about that. If you go on down near the bottom, there it is. It's number five in the notes I gave you. And it says double angle 2x and single angle together. What do you do? If you have a sine of 2x, you replace it with 2 sine cosine. Then I give an example. So you replace sine 2x with 2 sine regular x cosine regular x. Let's do that. So that's our first and most important step. So up we go. Let's take that. This piece right here will become... 2 sine regular x, well, you don't need the parentheses there, 2 sine x cosine x. There's the 2 that's on the outside, and then the sine 2x becomes 2 sine cosine. The other part just stays the same. And so then 2 times 2 is 4 sine x cosine x plus 1 sine x equals 0. Now, so we, so we got rid of the double angle problem, right? Do you see that? It's just regular x, regular x, regular x. We don't have any double x anymore. We handled 2x. Whenever you, have, whenever you have a 2x and a regular x in the same problem, you've got to do the double angle thing and make them regular x according to the formula. Okay, so now what are we going to do from here? Well, we have a couple of terms. Let's go down and look at our notes again. So now we have, we don't have double angle anymore. Now we, so we're going to a different part. Do we have only one type of trig? No, we have sine and cosine. Do we have two different types? Yeah, we have sine and cosine. If all the terms have a common piece, then factor and set equal to zero in each part. So for example, if you have two sine, cosine, and cosine, get a zero and factor out. That's what we have. That's what we're going to need to do. Now, now that we get rid of the double angle, now we have that. And do you see how... These guys both have what in common? They both have a sine x, don't they? So when you have a common piece, what it's saying is you factor out that common piece, right? And then that leaves 4 cosine plus 1 equals 0. Do you see that? If I was to multiply that there and multiply that there, 4 times cosine x would, would go back to 4 sine cosine, and sine times 1 would go back to 1 sine. Now where do we go from here? We set each part equal to zero. The sine of x equals zero, or the other part, four cosine x plus one equals zero. So each part equals zero. Now why? why? Why can you do that? Well, because if two things are multiplying to equal zero, either one could be zero to make that true. You know what I mean? If I, if I told you, hey, I'm thinking of two numbers, and I'm times in them, I'm multiplying them in the end, right? Something times something is coming out zero. Well, what do you know? The first one could be zero or the second one. Either one could be zero and they would multiply to be zero, right? That's what it means if two things are multiplying to equal zero. Either the first one is zero or the second one is zero. Either way. That's what we're doing here. Something times something is multiplying to equal zero. This is times, right? It's parentheses. So the first one is zero or the second one is zero. That's reasonable, isn't it? Okay, so now how do we handle this one? We go to the unit circle, and we go find where is the sine zero, right? Where is the sine equal to zero? So on the unit circle, let me erase the stuff I did on a previous problem. Where is the sine zero? Well, remember how this works. Cosine sine, oh, right there. There it is. Cosine sine, cosine sine. We're looking for where else, where else is the sine zero? Right, the first coordinate is always cosine. So there's another place, sine zero there, sine zero there. So that's it, pi and zero. Pi and zero, the sine of zero, sine is zero. So we got two answers from that. X could be zero or pi. 
Now, for the other side, we're going to have to solve for um, the cosine x. I get 4 cosine x is negative 1. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And I get cosine x is negative 1 fourth. Now, that's not on the unit circle. For that, I'm going to have to go to the calculator. But specifically, we have a whole bunch of instructions. Have you learned how to do this on your calculator? I'll come on down here and look at the notes with you. Um, okay, here's, here it is. It's on number three. When we must use the calculator because the values are not on the unit circle. That's us, right? Negative one-fourth is not on the unit circle. There's only numbers like half and square root of three over two and square root of two over two and zero and one. There's no negative one-fourth. So what do you do? After getting the sine, cosine, tangent alone, take the inverse of both sides. But before hitting the inverse on the calculator, change the number to be positive, even if it was negative at first. Realize now that your answer is an angle in the first quadrant because we changed to the right side to be positive. We, we need to find two quadrants where our answers will be using all students take calculus. And then here's how we find this. So I'll give an example um, on here. So let me, let me show you exactly how that works. So, so what we do first off, so step one, we change to positive. Change this to positive so it becomes cosine x. Well, here, let me keep it with the black color. So it becomes cosine x is positive one-fourth. So change to positive. And then the way to get rid of that to get x alone is you do cosine inverse of both sides. Of positive one-fourth. Now, right? That cancels out here and gets x alone. Then you take your calculator, hit the cosine inverse. May, oh, make sure you've got to be in radian mode at this point. Radian mode. Check your calculator. Make sure you're in radian mode. And then hit cosine inverse of 1 fourth. I'm getting 1.318116. That's plenty. Use a lot of digits just to be sure. Okay, I got that answer. Now, careful, that answer is not our final answer yet because remember, we changed. We changed to positive one-fourth. Why did we do that? We did that because we wanted to get it in the first quadrant. Remember, all the trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. And then we shift it to the real quadrants it should be in. Now, what do I mean by real quadrants it should be in? Well, if you do a little quadrant system over here, remember how the signs go? All are positive in the first quadrant. All students take calculus. So the original question is cosine negative, right? So the original, bring it over here, original is cosine negative, right? It was cosine negative one-fourth. That's the real question we're answering. So where is cosine negative? Cosine is negative, well, here and here, because here cosine is positive, here cosine is positive, right? They're all positive. So it's in the second and third quadrants that cosine will be negative. So we really need answers in the second and third quadrants. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, here's the answer in the first quadrant, meaning this angle is 1.318116 in the first quadrant. But I need that same answer, which is still, um, you know, 1.318 blah, 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 that way, and right here, going down, 1.318. I need the, those same answers in the second and third quadrants. Well, how do, you, how do you do that? Well, just how do you get angles in the third quadrant? you got to go all the way to there, I mean, for the second quadrant, which means what? All the way to pi back up. So the second quadrant answer is going to be pi back up, 1.318116, and the third quadrant answer. How do I get the third quadrant answer? Can you can you picture that to get to the to get to the third quadrant right here? You got to go all the way to pi and then add pi and then add the 1.31811 whoops, I'm getting sloppy there. 116. And that's exactly you don't have to memorize those or figure those out every time. They're they're on here. I did them for you. 
right here. How to, how to find a second and third quadrant answer, pi minus the calculated value and pi plus. So it's all there for you. Put it in your notes. You're good. So I just wanted to show you, though, why. And so if we get those two answers, then, on our calculator, so I'm going to use the pi button. So pi minus that number we had, and I'm getting 1.82347, and then when I go pi plus it, let me, um, um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to add pi to it, and I get 4.45974 oh, eight, good enough. So there's the other two answers that we get. So putting it all together, what are the answers? Zero and pi, right? The two we got from that side, they're still valid answers. And the 1.823, comma, 4.4. 459708. Oh, there they are, the four answers to this question. So there it is. That's not an easy question.